So when I got there, I, 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 they put me on minister seat. Okay. You can imagine, the pastor didn't greet me now. So I'm wondering, okay, how did they arrange this meeting? Because the pastor is not, is not happy that I'm there. I greeted him like this. He pretended as, as if he didn't see me. I didn't like it. When I was tired, I, I stopped. I saw the elders at the back. I, I did like this. No one. So I'm wondering who approved the who approved my coming. <laughs> then we started ministry. Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. A senior minister called me. You know, I called him. I said, ah, does the devil attack you the way he attacks me? He said, my son, in 1983, <coughs> I went for a crusade in Oupa. And the whole place scattered. In fact, I'm talking about Evangelist Sunday, which he even gave an altar call. I said, if you're a witch here, if you're a witch, signify witches. Which the power was too much that witches had to accept we're here. We're also, we also came. We came for the crusade. Okay. And Satan spoke to him. Satan said, if you allow my people, I will allow you. If you keep attacking my people, I will continue to attack you. But if you allow my people, I will allow you. So Satan brought that thought to him before he came for the crusade ground. And when the hand of God was moving so powerfully and the witches indicated that they were witches, Satan spoke again. I said, didn't we agree that <laughs> if you allow me, I will allow you. So because of that quiet agreement, he refused to deliver those witches. He said, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And you know that's not how deliverance takes place. <laughs> Do you know that he was driving out of that crusade ground on the way, just like one hour on the way back home, the witches, they attacked him. So he said, ah. So Satan doesn't keep to his agreement. So he made up his mind that he was going to, that's 1980, what? Three. How many years down the road? He made up his mind that he was going to do damage to the kingdom of darkness. Because Satan will never keep any negotiation agreement with you for, for your safety. Please help me tell neighbor, we wrestle. I, I know you don't like attack. I came to teach you and to educate you about attacks, spiritual attacks. First of all, understand that it is allowed. There are several engagements you might find yourself in and you have feedback from there. It doesn't mean you are not strong. It just means that we wrestle. We wrestle. <laughs> Once upon a time, I went to preach. We started from Enugu. It was an, it was a, an Eastern regional apostolic invasion. We started from Enugu. It was powerful. If I'm not mistaken, that the hall we used is the biggest possible hall that is available for rent in the whole of Enugu State. We finished from Enugu. We went to Oka. It was in Oka. I was in the hotel room praying and I saw blood. I don't know with what eyes, whether it was in this body or not, but I saw blood running on the walls of the hotel that they put me. And when I pressed about it and pressed about it, the great one said it was not the hotel. It was not because it was not particular to the hotel, but the entire territory, that there's bloodshed in this territory. Gave some instructions as to what we need to do. It was a mighty meeting. In Enugu, cripples walked in Oka cripples walked. We moved from Oka to Oweri. It was in Oweri. After the first night, it was very tight. Second night, I went and prayed. And then it was the third night. When we came to the field, so I know some of you were watching, it rained throughout. I couldn't preach. It was when I went back, that there was a spiritual fight. The principality came to my room. I defeated it, but it touched me here. <laughs> Please help me tell your neighbor, we wrestle. It touched me here. I left over here. I went to Abba. We had our meeting in Abba, PAF. From Abba, I went to Portacot, the edge of yeah, Portacot, and finished the whole instant, instant conference. By the time I got back, I thought I was dead. And Shala now came and said, he has crusade somewhere that Kai, he told them that I'm coming. I put on one garment and followed him. We crossed the river. What? The river in Bees village, Pastor Bui. Crossed the river to go for the crusade. I was on the pulpit preaching and they didn't know I was blind. 
I almost fell, but they didn't know. At least the thing didn't stop me from talking. For like 20 minutes, I couldn't see. I was still talking, preaching, preaching. It was a powerful night that night. I crawled to my bed and I was sure that I would not wake up the next day. And I told Jesus, huh? is this how my exit from this world will look like? <laughs> and in the dream, the Lord now came to me and said, don't worry about yourself, just follow me. Came back, went to the hospital. When they tested me, I was not, I was so sick according to the test. The principality touched me here. So that's the blue. I was advised to rest. I rested. There were treatment, all of that. And I got back to my feet. I told Satan, you would have taken me. <laughs> it, it's, it was in your interest for you to take me. Because you too, you won't rest again. If the issue of that attack was not strong, I will not tell you. You think? It was as if life was living. But I continued preaching. Continued preaching. And what, after that crusade, Jesus Christ. I learned a thing or two. First thing I learned was not to overstretch my body. Right? You need to be in very good balance in health, in spirit, to be able to combat spiritual warfare. Don't stand at any extreme. Satan will exploit it. Are you with me? So even now that you're fasting, ensure that you're hydrated. Take water. Eh? Don't say you are. Don't find yourself on any extreme whatsoever if you want to survive this. Destiny theft is a specialty in spiritual attacks. We have thefts, we have exchanges. What is meant for you can be spiritually exchanged and given to someone else through sorcery, through manipulation. So we have first kind of attacks are in form of thefts. For the thief commit not. Even though he's identified as a thief, his activity goes beyond stealing. It's inclusive of stealing and it goes beyond stealing. Theft. Hallelujah. There are, we've seen people, I'm talking about in practical ministry, practical experience. We've seen people that um, I don't know how the devil was able to say that they had a bright future and he put spanner in the works of their destiny. Transmitted the, the essence of their destiny. And that destiny was funding someone else's life. And the advancement that was supposed to come to this young man was going to the other person. I don't know how they achieved that but it was the work of the thief. So there are some deliberate prayers I would like to lead us in praying against the work of a thief. This spiritual thief, oh my, I've seen people that were supposed to be wealthy in abject poverty and people use their, the substance of their word spiritually to fund other interests. Those of you that are from the thief extraction of the state, there is a certain witchcraft spell which has gained rep reputation over the years. Uh, what's the name of that Chief, Chief Don, please take the microphone and mention that name. Because somebody in, in Finland will not know that there's anything like that. Can you describe that witchcraft? Please. Yeah. Switch on your microphone. So Chief Don will try to help us describe. And this is the best, a very practical description of spiritual theft. Okay, go on. Some people is like uh, a god of prosperity. Okay. Normally they take human bone or they carve a wooden image and then they will kill human blood or kill somebody. And then pour blood, blood on upon the it, and then activate it. Now, when it is activated, let's say we are all family members. Me, you, Shala, Evangelist Philip, Pastor Ogbe. If it's activated and I'm the one to prosper, what will happen to the rest? They'll be poor. They'll be poor. That's and spiritual theft. It. It's the essence. If you're a team man here, let me. Do you have any insight into what he's saying? All right. So, so that's spiritual theft. You see, the prosperity, the, the pseudo prosperity that the guy that is prospering through that agency is receiving um, is at the expense of the possibilities of the rest members of the family. So the rest members of the family will pay the price. Their essence, their substance, their light, their illumination is gathered and used to empower one individual and their own lot and portion will be abject poverty. Penury. When you find an unnatural kind of poverty, it's as a result of manipulation. It's a function of the activity of the thief. 
The thief cometh not. He doesn't have any other agenda. But when he shows up, what he does is that he steals. So there are categories of spiritual attacks that are within the description of theft. Bro, come. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes these things. Do. No, 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 no. Get the mic. Get it. Your experience. What happened in your family? You told me some stories when you came those days Prison. about your elder, elder brother, some of the things he did and uh, some of the promises he gave you. Can you help us? Give us insight. You know, when we teach these things, people say, ah. no, it's not utopian. It's practical. Yes? Prison. Hallelujah. Um, my elder brother, we're just two, as in male. He told me. There are just two. Yes. Two, two males in the family. The sisters, too. Okay, a lot of sisters, but yes, males? Three of them. Now, this elder brother you're talking about is he from your mom? Yes, and same dad. Same dad, same mom. Yes, okay. sir. So, in the world of witchcraft, you, your brotherhood, your true brotherhood, are the members of the coven. Um, your blood, in fact, some of the most hated people around your life might even be your blood relatives. So, the psychology of, of witches is what we are still studying it. We are still studying <laughs> We are laboring to understand the way which is think. Okay? So this is his blood brother. All right? Go on. So I, I traveled to the village 2018 and then I met with him. He said, uh, he, when he saw me, he was shocked. And then he started confessing that he has done everything to kill me, to destroy me, to waste my life. He don't even know. It's only God that can tell the story as to why I am still you see, alive. alive. Okay. And then he now said, uh, he has. He has gone to so many places. He brought out my picture that he had with him. And he said, this picture has been to so many places. But he tried to kill me, but it didn't work. He tried to convert my wealth because he has seen who I am in the realm of the spirit. That he has done everything. So that's the aspect that concerns me. Mm. Converting his wealth. Now, you might see this very simple scripture. And in your own estimation, it's, it's poetic. The thief cometh not. But to steal, to kill. <laughs> God has revealed big things in that way. So he traveled from place to place, trying to shrine. Seeking to find the warlock that has the mastery of wealth transfer. When you are talking about wealth transfer and believing God, you are quoting the scripture, the wealth of the wicked is accumulated, is laid up for the just. They which have another doctrine. Their own doctrine is that your own wealth is available. And it's going to be converted, it's going to be diverted. Just like budgetary allocations in in the Nigerian context, are diverted. It's also possible in the realm of the spirit. Yes? So, he said, it, some, to some places he went, the native doctors, they, they pursued him because he said, this man, you can't destroy him. And then, the last time I traveled, he told me about the same thing he did, that it didn't work. The chance. So anytime he goes home, he has news <laughs> from a very desperate a very desperate, wicked brother. He, he asks news from the brother every time he goes home. So even before he travels home, he will send me a text. Can I go this? So he comes with new expositions. May the Lord give you understanding. May God help you to know that witches are not as relaxed as you. Mm. They are very determined. Very consistent. At the end of the day, when we see Satan on the other side, I will hear him. That ah, You try. <laughs> <laughs> you try. Oh God, you try very consistent. You will pray for 21 days. I say you want to go and stretch. You want to stretch yourself. Which is don't go on sabbatical. It's after that 21 days they will now become, they will charge. The Bible says that Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. We we're not told the temptation for the, for the 40 days. But the Bible says that after those days were ended, he was unhungered and the tempter. <laughs> you would think that, okay, it's 40 days temptation. Then you will relax. After those, the temptations that recorded in the Bible were the temptations he tempted Jesus after those 40 days were accomplished. So anytime he goes home, there's breaking news of current satanic technology that has been adopted <coughs> to prey on his death. <laughs> okay, just round up. The, the last time I traveled, he met with me and he said, uh, he had done everything to kill me, but since he didn't work, can we be one family? <laughs> In fact, he said that. Now let's be one. There's something called the witchcraft embrace. I don't, I don't have time for that this time. When a witch, a warlock has tried 
to get you spiritually and he doesn't succeed, he needs to be able to get you physically, naturally. So um, he begins to advance this strategy of embrace. We'll talk about the ingredients in that strategy. And just in case you're in that situation, what and what you need to do. There is something that must happen before you can accept that person as a brother. Until that thing happens, don't be gullible enough to drop your guard. Because when you see the appeal for community, it is an indication of the fact that the warfare has gone to another level. Are you true? All right, so salute my friend. Luke chapter 10 verse 19, that's the insurance policy of spiritual warfare. If you are in a situation of warfare, this is the guarantee. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So the insurance policy of spiritual warfare is about you. You get it? So when there's a battle situation and it becomes so terrible, this is the guarantee. You will not be hurt. It is because of this that we need to, our children, spiritual and physical children, must be brought up to be warriors too. The more warriors we have in the clan, the more impossible it will be for Satan to be able to prey on any life. I heard of a pastor that pastored for 32 years and under his pastorate, nobody died for 32 years. He trained everybody to be a warrior. 32 years. An American pastor. So, the moment your children come of age, teach them how to pray in tongues and how to pray in tongues for long. Take food from them, let them understand fasting. How to starve the flesh and to stuff the spirit. You'll find out that under 12, under 14, children will be able to have prophetic dreams that will guide you and save you from attack. Just like the scripture says, nothing shall by any means hurt you, nothing shall by any means hurt them too. See that? I have seen people that died just because they were spiritually immature and they made no effort whatsoever to build themselves beyond their current status of civilization. When intense wars take place, the innocent suffer. Have you heard of what happened to in, in the book of Matthew chapter 2 when Herod was looking for the children that were two years and under because the wise men, when they left his palace, they went to visit Jesus in Manger and they were warned by an angel and they departed another way. The statistics that Herod had with which he could walk with was two years and under. So he gave a decree that they should slaughter every child that was two, year and, two years and under because he didn't have more information in his data bank. He had a broadband kind of information and that was what they used to execute children. A generation of children, they were wiped out because it was a day when spirits were at war. Human beings were pawns in their chess games. You will see angels leap into people's dreams and say, go to Egypt. Because it, they, they, there was chess, chess game in the territory. And we could see that the devil did not have the insights that would have given him the advantage in the war. So he had to kill a lot of people. And that day, children died not because they had sinned. That day, people died because in the time of spiritual warfare, innocence is not a guarantee for life. I went to preach in my village and it was a powerful moment. You know, that anointing that is upon me to design debt, people that are about to die, it was just operating and we're bringing people from the hands of death. It was wonderful. And I'm talking about my, our ancestral church. I know you don't understand what I'm talking about. When, I don't even know how they invited me in the first place. In fact, I'm, I'm confused now. I'm confused. But it's just like NKST, they invite me to preach in NKST. Not NKST, my God, the NKST in the village, in your village where you have. So when I got there, I, 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 they put me on minister seat. Okay. You can imagine, the pastor didn't greet me now. So I'm wondering, okay, how did they arrange this meeting? Because the pastor is not, is not happy that I'm there. I greeted him like this. He pretended as, as if he didn't see me. I didn't like it. When I was tired, I, I stopped. I saw the elders at the back. I, I did like this. No one. So I'm wondering who approved, the, who approved my coming. <laughs> then we started ministry. The healing anointing came so strong. Two of the elders that were deaf in one ear each. The ears popped up. My own uncle that is the eldest in our family now. I didn't know he was deaf in one ear. All this while, his ear popped up. And he, he gave his life to Christ during the, the altar call. Witches began to manifest in the church with loud voices. When I finished preaching and I came back, 
I say greeted the elders. Then they, they now looked at me angrily, but they now do like. <laughs> Power can change things. Power can change it. <laughs> Finished preaching, hopped into the vehicle to come back. We got to um, Taraku. One man has, his brake had failed. And he just faced us like this. And the guy that was in front of us now stepped on his brake to ensure that we, didn't, we couldn't dodge. If we go this way, we'll kill everybody here. So we just waited for the man to come and we drove that car from that place to Makoti like a bicycle. Because in the heart of spiritual warfare, God can allow some of your, your goods to be victims. But nothing shall by any means. The thief cometh not, but to steal. So I have stories of wars that were fought in the name of the Lord. There were some times that God would say, wake up now. Where are you? Wake up, wake up. Take your things and leave here now. I don't know what it was preventing. I don't know because I obeyed. So I, I, I didn't stay long enough to know what he wanted to prevent. For which he hurriedly said, so I've seen times when Jehovah said, leave here today. So I don't ask questions. I don't send pleasantries. And those days I didn't have a car. So I moved to the park and I went. And I've been asking him, what, what was it that you were so apprehensive about? He has not told me to do. So we have had cars bashed. We have had all kinds of stuff take place. But one thing I can tell you, if it's too bad, nothing shall by any means hurt you. If not, the three, the, the three levels of covering have to do with you, have to do with your household, have to do with your substance. If you study the book of Job, you'll find out that the first victims of that spiritual attack was what? Substance. Second victims of the spiritual attack was what? His household. That's why I'm trying to let you understand that even if the devil begins to attack the household, if each and every one of them is, has his own stature, that will not, it will not prevail. But in their own case, Job was the only spiritual man that offer sacrifices on their behalf every day and say, Lord, forgive them all if anyone has sinned against you and has, you know, retained evil in their thoughts. Take the sacrifice for them. So Job, Job, uh, Job was the one overseeing the entire landscape with his own spirituality instead of him to disciple the people to be able to hold their own ground. So the measure, the estimation of my success in ministry is not a product of how many people I can gather because Jesus is not looking for sitting capacity. He's looking for sending capacity. How many people can we send in the name of Jesus to go do damage to the kingdom of darkness? We are tired of people that sit down. And so this year, we're in a cantonment trying to transform you from sitting down to becoming a, an active fighter in the ways of war that is raging in the spirit. Please help me tell your neighbor, nothing shall by any means hurt you. So when you come to the battlefront, you come with full assurance of faith that if this thing goes bad, I'm sure of my life. Satan can be vicious. It can be terrible. It can come with all manner of tricks to intimidate you and to break your confidence. But you need to hear God before Satan speaks to you. And God is saying, nothing shall by any means hurt you. If I had more time, I would have shown you the, um, the politics behind spiritual warfare and the circumstances under which God may allow, may, big may, allow your substance to be encroached upon. Hallelujah. So apart from the altar that we have in the church here, you need to have another altar at home so that when it comes for your household, he will meet a stronger hedge than the one you found in the city center. Set up the hedge of your own household. Set up the hedge. If you are a new, if you are intending to become a husband and there's a lady you are cutting, you know what? Begin to practice hedging, hedging in prayer. I saw some people wearing red and white yesterday. I say, you, you are far. <laughs> you are far from the kingdom of God. You are far from the kingdom of God. Practice, begin to practice what you will do. A critical part of your existence in marriage is to ensure that the edge is strong because the altar is burning. It's because Satan will come. And that's what the apostle wanted to, to notify us of. He started his presentation by saying, For we rest. I'm going to stop there. For we rest. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness 
in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. We are going to rise today and contend in the spirit. And I will show you some tricks on how to contend. Hallelujah. Many times Satan knows that he's short of raw materials, short of staff. He would like to go to places where he is likely to win. He doesn't like the cl clan of the warriors. He doesn't like it. He will only come to the clan of the warriors if he doesn't have any choice. If the damage we are doing to him is in, is in, is in very terrible proportions, then he tries to see if he can do something. But he doesn't like fighting people that are strong. He will pray on you when you are born in low. Oh my God. We rest. So tonight what we are going to do is to give Satan a blow. Because the activity in the spirit that we do is capable of blows. It's capable of it. It's capable of it. First of all, we warm our spirit by a moment. Five minutes of speaking tongue. I just have 15 minutes to do what we need to do. Can you gain ascendancy in the spirit? Gain ascendancy in the spirit. We are warriors in the hands of our master. We are a warrior people, a warrior clan. We fight in the name of our Lord. Simon Kobelaski, Mandoski, Sosana, and Brada Baboria, Skizamote, Asika, Mekabola, Masika, Ronse, Samante, Baboko, Sabakata, Barika, Skadia, Tambo, Lokobre, Busa, Kebosa, Bari, Masuke, Brate, Kaskito, Mondeli. Jenny Kabata Kosezani Abresko Petabuko Batala. That's one of the metaphors of the Christian. He's a warrior. He's a radical in the spirit. Zaimo Korena Sike. Rahaska Tombre. Ruka Babalikos Kabalantelia. Abrema Kabaruka Sate. Alisko Pelanto. Braka Seminaita. Risko Fatama Kundele. Azizonda. Abraska Tomoko Rote Zali. Amaita Kombe. Shamina ita kumba santa alatos alatos yatatos lenkatos brantatos baratosa ikamaseli asosela ikombrantelia shamina kabelaske brantaba bola hababata shamina hanta la baboria sheki la bonde makabalatala sheki na bonde shamina koska tamina anteli abreka patala alabosa alabosa aske balonteli asuka pata kuna abatezi abreka santa baboria Escapale Makunda, Abaya Kusketa, Iskompela, Abarata, Igabalama Sante, Azosaita, Akamanselia, Akope Esketomena. Lai Kompala no se kembeles, Isko Patola Mahaito, Orosketa Mika Bela, Yekekela, Supriata, Matabondeke, Mata Sabalatelia, Esosena Kabalata, Ebrante Kompalama, Yaka Besami, Ala Prompelo, Asama Lanteli, Abresco Pelama Cantababoria, Alama Mamana Hassan, Alama Mamana Sika, Ascanda Babola Capresa, Abro Capatua, Ebraketone, Asiko Brena, Acabala Tuante, Acaba Sominante, Icabalata Branda Baboria, Abresco Palata, Abranda Baboria, Estamena Sika, Abranda Basuka Velato, Yata Tomina Kenda, Abraka Basanda, Abranda Cola Batua, Escombe Lamenata. A Kabalata Rana Baboria, I Kabes Kominante, A Kama Nobre, A Kama Samat, A Kama Samat, Kama Samat, E Kaita, E Branda Baboria, A Suma Kanda Babonda, A La 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 Basuke, Rakata Namalataya, A La Puskate, A Pakat, A Samakat, La Kabarata Branda Baboria, Oria Mama Sika Terminala, Luke Basuka Talibo Korea. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook and we are on Twitter. Thank you.